It's time to get inside the Giants huddle. Let's go back to your huddle. On Giants.com. Tempo, tempo, tempo. And the Giants mobile app. Go, 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 part go. Part of the Giants podcast network. Yeah. Welcome to the newest edition of the Giants huddle podcast. John Schmelk with you. Today's guest, a trio of Giants linebackers. A couple of inside linebackers in Tay Crowder and Blake Martinez. But first, outside linebacker and edge rusher O'Shane Zimenez. Heading into his third year, a former third-round pick out of Old Dominion, an injury plagued 2020. Let's start with my conversation with O'Shane Zimenez, the X-Man. And now we're joined by Giants edge rusher O'Shane Zimenez, X-Man. Good to see you, man. How are you? Doing good, man. How about yourself? I'm doing great. All right, let's talk about this first. Are you healthy? I know you lost the last half of last year with, with your shoulder. How you doing? And, and are you feeling good that you're going to be full go for camp? Yeah, um, so I've been putting in work, doing as much as I can every single day to get back up to speed, and I've been feeling pretty good, and I'm confident leading the camp. How frustrating was that for you last year? Did you feel like you were, you know, making a lot of progress before that kind of came up and, and, and just derailed you? Uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, it's one of the first time I missed time from playing football, so it was definitely frustrating for me not being out there with my teammates. And, you know, it, it humbled me, and I got a different scope of the game, and I'm just ready for this year coming up. Well, you mentioned it. What was the different scope of the game that you think you were able to get by watching instead of doing? It just made me appreciate, like, all those times, you know, you may be a little tired for practice and you don't really want to be out there. But, you know, just being away from it made me appreciate every little thing, like everything that comes with this game. And, you know, I'm just excited to get back out there and, you know, appreciate those little things that I didn't value before. I guess I'll word the question this way. So what did the fans miss out on? Like, what were you ready to do? How, what kind of progress had you made and were ready to display out there before that injury kind of, you know, cut your season short a little bit? Yeah, I was just ready to just compete with my teammates, man. You know, go out there, rush the passer, and, you know, make plays and just do all the things that we love doing playing football. As you've rehabbed, how have you been able to balance that with also working on your craft to become a better football player this offseason. I know that could be tough, right? Yeah, that that was it's definitely a unique situation. You got to, like, find a good balance because you don't want to push yourself too hard and risk re-injury, or, but you also want to get better every single day. So you got to find your balance and, you know, work it out with your trainers. Like, we have some of the best trainers here with the Giants. You know, they helped me tremendously over the, the last six months. And, you know, just finding that balance and just trying not to push too hard, but finding a good means to getting better. Aside from your health, what were your main goals this offseason in terms of trying to become that better football player? Uh, just definitely working on my craft, you know, toning in on my hands and working with different hand coaches and, you know, just fine-tuning fine all my moves and just coming back a completely better player. As an edge player, what is it like playing for Patrick Graham in his scheme where, depending on the week, you're doing probably some very different things? Yeah, you, you definitely have to be very multiple. You got to know how to do every single thing. You could be dropping, you could be rushing. You just never really know. You always got to be ready because you got to be ready for you throw at you because, like I said, it's a very multiple defense. And what are your goals now heading into this year for you? Uh, my goals this year is definitely to uh, just stay healthy for 16 games, of course, and, and I just want to be productive and help my team any way I can. X, good stuff, man. We appreciate it. All right, no doubt. We thank O'Shane Zimenez for joining us on the Giants Huddle. Just a reminder that limited Giants season tickets are on sale now for the 2021 season. In addition to ticket savings, membership benefits include access to exclusive events, experiences, pre-sales, and more. You can lock in your seat starting at just 100 bucks. Call 888-NYG-1925 or visit Giants.com slash tickets for more information. Now let's get to Giants inside linebacker Tay Crowder. Heading into his second season out of Georgia, he was Mr. Irrelevant in the 2020 draft. But in his rookie year, he had some real valuable reps playing inside linebacker next to Blake Martinez. Here's my chat with Tay Crowder. And now we're joined by Giants linebacker Tay Crowder. Tay, how much different do you feel in terms of being ready to step in and play an NFL game today as opposed to this day last year? Man, I'm excited, you know, uh, to be able to go out and uh, get a little playing time and get some experience. Um, I'm just excited to, you know, be able to come back and see what I can do to help the team even more this year. What were some of the things you think you learned in your rookie last year, kind of getting thrown into the fire a little bit? Uh, you know, just trying to adjust quickly as I can, you know, just paying attention to the vets. Uh, like uh, my teammate Blake Martinez, just looking at a lot of stuff that he does, you know, taking care of his body and stuff on and off the field. How about the mental part? We know playing inside linebacker, there's a lot of stuff you're looking at you got to read. What are some of the things that Blake tried to teach you and you learned from him in terms of getting better in the mental part of the game? 
man, we're like the quarterback of the defense. So, you know, you got to get the call, give it out, you know, line up, play. So stuff like that, just paying attention to how he does it, you know, take your time, don't overthink it, don't over, you know, do it, and just relax and play ball. How much different is the film study and preparation week to week in the NFL as opposed to what you're doing on the collegiate level? Man, it's definitely like class, you know, just study. You got to really study your opponent, you know. You got to know the people. Coaches always hit on that a lot. Know the people. And, you know, knowing the people, it'll help you a lot because you'll know how they play and what they like to do, stuff like that. What are some of your offseason goals? Where does Tay Crowder really want to improve in his second year? I definitely want to play at a high level. You know, I want to help my team at all angles. Uh, I feel like if I can stay on the field, stay healthy, I can uh, help my team to the most as I can. When you looked at your performance in year one, are you, where do you think you might have the most work to do? Is it maybe getting a little better on the run? Is it a little more defending the pass? What were some of the really focused areas where after you looked at your first year, like, all right, I really want to improve here or here? Uh, you know, I want to just play at a high level, like I said, play bigger, you know, just give it all I got and um, give the team all I got, like I said. How much better is it and helpful is it for a player like you to actually be able to have some on-field work in the offseason and not have everything be virtual where you can actually get on the field with your teammate, with your coaches, and work on what you're trying to learn? Uh, you know, it helped a lot, getting to know everybody, um, getting familiar. You know, you got to uh, get on the field and get used to who you're playing with and uh, the coaches, see how they coach you. So it, it's, it's definitely a great experience to be able to go out and do that. Finally, what's your excitement level? I mean, there's a chance here, you know, there are open positions to start, to do a lot of different things with this team. What's your excitement level heading into year two where you can really build on what you did in your first season? Like I said, I'm just really excited to, you know, get back to playing, uh, helping the team, and this team is building, and we're, we're, we're on, it's only up from here. Tay, good stuff, man. Appreciate it. Best luck this year. Appreciate you. That's Giants second-year inside linebacker Tay Crowder. Don't miss out on your chance to experience a premier hospitality experience watching Giant games and world-class concerts in 2021 as a Giant Suite partner. Limited full-season locations are available or place a deposit for individual games. Call 888-NYG-1925 or visit Giants.com slash suites for more information. All right, now let's get to Blake Martinez, one of the leaders on this Giants team, led the team in tackles in 2020, heading into his second year with Big Blue. All right, and now we're joined by Giants linebacker Blake Martinez. Blake, second year. I mean, you're here, actually have an offseason. How about that? You practice in no. May, in June? Who, who could believe it? What is it like in your second year here? It's crazy. It's kind of, it feels like I'm in like year one and a half at this point because I finally <laughs> get to have this OTAs, get to hang out with the new guys, the new rookies, things like that. So it's been cool to have that aspect um, going into this year and just excited. What's the difference for a guy like you who has such a great mental approach to the game to being able to be in this system for a second year now? No, it's huge. I think every single time you step on the practice field, go in the meeting room, you can learn something new. And the way the coaches teach um, and the guys work every day, you, you always find something you can add to your tool belt. And it's, it's been awesome to have that right now. What kind of jump do you think we can see from not just you, but the defense as a whole, knowing that you now are doing this for Pat Graham in, in your second year? No, yeah, I think for us, our big thing is just focus on that, that given day, that, that given practice, that given meeting. Um, and we built that foundation as the year went on last year. Uh, and going into this year, it's, it's making those new guys catch up to that speed. And then at that point, I think the sky's the limit. Now, they rolled a lot of rookies into your room last year. How much progress did you see from them over the course of the year? And what kind of jump can we expect from that group in year number two? No, definitely. I think every single one of them contributed, did what they needed to do. Um, but like I told all of them, it's a big year one to year two jump. And that's when you kind of separate yourself. And I think a lot of guys came back ready to go in shape, um, looking a lot bigger, a lot stronger, a lot faster. Uh, yeah, I'm excited. We talk about in the system a lot how week to week the defense can look very different based on opponent. Did that? I'm sure they talked to you about that when you got here last year. Did it meet your expectation in terms of how many changes you really can have week to week based on your opponent? Oh yeah, 100. percent And it's there's so many things, so many aspects that can go in, so many factors. Um, you have to be ready at any given moment and know what you're doing all the time. And that's extra film work too, right? Going in. Oh yeah, all always. Um, it's just so many things were happening you always had probably plan a through z instead of just having plan a b c you had the whole alphabet and it was just certain things you had to be ready to go on the fly no matter what situation happened and i got to imagine now with some additional help coming in this offseason to dory jackson you know you guys kind of shuttled people in and out of that second cornerback spot last year a lot 
it probably opens up more stuff you can do, especially in terms of the coverages in the secondary, right? No, definitely. There's a lot of different aspects. And like you said, you make that year one scheme grow to year two. Um, you're able to make that jump, add those new things in because people just understand that much more. Final question. You talk about disguise a lot on this defense and how you try to make a team think you're doing one thing, then you do the other. It makes them hold the ball, make mistakes. I feel like that's more of an art than a science. Can you describe to me the art of disguise with what you guys try to do on defense to fool the opposing quarterback? Yeah, it's, it's one thing where it's one guy's disguising, but it's it's that that art that comes up of when you have all 11 in unison showing the same thing at the same time and switching at the same time. And it's it started to grow as the year went on, and we're just keep getting better and better as uh, training camp goes on the rest of OTAs. Well, we look forward to seeing it on the field, Blake. Thanks so much. No, thank you for having me. That's Blake Martinez. We thank him, Tay Crowder, and O'Shane Zimenez for joining us on this edition of the Giants Huddle Podcast. Thank you for being with us. We'll continue with our chats with current Giant players as we continue through June and July right here on the Giants Huddle Podcast.